Hello Aries and welcome to your reading for March of 2021. Some of you will be celebrating birthdays at the end of the month. I did finally get my tuck box open for the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. Um, but because I'm having difficulties with it, I'm just gonna leave the cards out. I hope that's okay. on camera, just enough for you to get the feel for them. They do have a really good snap. They're very thick, very um, good quality cards. Uh, I do have to say they are not too thick to shuffle well. They do still shuffle quite well. That's always my fear, is that I'm gonna get a deck of cards and my tiny little baby hands won't be able to handle it. And then I'll go to use them and I'll be horribly, horribly embarrassed. Now, I will be using another deck to clarify, and I'll be putting um, basically the astrological wheel around, so the 12 houses. Aries. The first card we have coming out for you is justice, so there could be some situation in March in which you either are seeking justice or are getting justice. Crossing justice, we have the world card, which is a great combination to come out right off the bat. Um, the world card is all about um, the world being your oyster and having everything that you could possibly want at your fingertips. a nautical theme, but also a mermaid theme, primarily mermaid themed, but with other elements thrown in. Let's look at the past, Aries. What happened in your past? Well, we have the Eight of Swords here in the reverse which shows that you had been in a stuck situation and got out of it, which is very good. The current situation. So, as you guys know by now, I'm sure, this is your perspective. This is the outside perspective. And right here, where they meet, is the truth. Let's look at your perspective first, which of course is colored by your past. 
we have the Page of Wands here. Now that could definitely be you, Aries. Um, Page of Wands has a young energy, uh, and Aries often carries the energy of beginnings. So, um, Page of Wands here could have been a beginning to a creative endeavor. It can be a younger fire sign. could be you. Um, if you are very young at heart, shall we say. What's the outside perspective on this story? Well, we had the Eight of Swords in the reverse, and we have now the Ten of Swords in the upright. So from the outside looking in, it looks like an ending. But from the inside looking out, the energy is really fresh uh, and almost like a new beginning. This isn't quite Ace of Wands energy, of course, but it is still very fresh, very young, and very uh, full of vigor and passion. What's the truth of the situation? We know it's not the Ten of Swords. It's the Page of Cups. Page of Cups. Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is about an offering. So you see that he has this cup here in his hand that's got a fish in it. Fish representing money um, and the cups representing emotional offering. So, could be either one of those. And that's the truth of the matter. It's very difficult to reconcile that uh, all three of these things could be representative of the current situation. Um, especially because the Page of Wands and the Page of Cups are both so uh, an overwhelmingly fresh and new energy, and yet the Ten of Swords here is an ending, and kind of a, a definitive ending. Now, uh, it's possible that you moved on from this situation a long time ago, actually. Because, again, in the past we have that Eight of Swords in the reverse. So, if you got off the train at the Eight of Swords, and everyone else saw the train pull into the station in the Ten of Swords, uh, I could see how people might perceive that be your fate, but it looks like your perception of the situation is actually much closer to the truth of the situation. And if you look at it too, wands is the fire energy and the cups is the water energy. And those two polarities are not just opposite to each other, but that the wands are the active and the cups are the passive or receptive. So that's very interesting for you so far, Aries. So far, so good. And we have plenty of cards left to pull. Here in the future, we have the Ten of Wands. Now, this could go a couple of ways, admittedly. So, the Ten of Wands in the reverse like this in the future could be that one of these elements ends up being a burden to you. We'll have to look at these other cards to find out for sure. 
Um, that doesn't have to be the case though. It could also be that this Ten of Wands in the reverse, you are throwing off all of these burdens. And because you're throwing them off, this card is coming out in the reverse as an action that you're performing. It could also be an evolution, but the Ten of Wands actually comes before the court cards. So to me, because it's in the future like that, you're probably casting off that Ten of Wands energy and not taking up new burdens. We'll look at the hopes and fears. And I'm going to read this card upright. Because your hopes are really just the reverse of your fears. And I also like to take this card and use it to cross the future. Much like we use the conditions of the current state, right? Because your hopes and fears are going to be the conditions of your future state. So we have the Seven of Cups crossing the Ten of Wands reversed in this case. The Seven of Cups is all about options. Um, some of the options are great. Some of them are perfect for you. And other options are not good at all. Um, there's, you know, snakes. There's this little imp, dragon, or demon right there. That in itself could be good or bad. So, when we are looking at the Seven of Cups crossing this Ten of Wands in the reverse, it could be about a choice that you're making. Um, because having all of those options might become a burden to you if you're not careful. You can look now at the goal or destiny card. We have the Three of Swords here. So again, because this card is coming out uh, kind of as a predictor, and it's coming out in the reverse, uh, it's going to take a little bit of clarification to decide whether that means an end to disagreements, or whether it means that there will be disagreements far in the future. Three of Swords is about interpersonal conflicts. So whether that is a fight in a relationship or an argument, um, it can represent a breakup, but I'll tell you what really represents a breakup, and that is this Ten of Swords over here. Um, so you might be getting ready to part ways with someone. This doesn't have to be a romantic situation. This could be an employer. It could be a good friend. It definitely could be an employer because if you're getting a better offer, that's what it looks like to me is that you've gotten a better offer. And so this other person sees it as a um, an ending, but you see it as the beginning of this new phase in your life. Now, um, you just definitely want to make sure that you're not jumping out of the frying pan and into the fire, so we will make sure that we clarify that card. We'll look at the final outcome. And that final outcome is the King of Cups in the reverse. 
So again, this being in the future, this could be somebody that you haven't met yet. Um, but you do have the Page of Cups here. So it's entirely possible, especially you, Aries, having fire in your chart. This is definitely you, this Page of Wands here coming out in your reading. Um, this Page of Cups very well could evolve into this King of Cups in the reverse. King of Cups in the reverse is someone who's moody, uh, and not necessarily someone who's abusive, but can be emotionally manipulative, um, coercive, um, and could definitely lead to disagreements and arguments. So let's find out if that is what you are looking at in your future. These cards I love. Uh, one of the stylistic, stylistic, stylistic elements of the 50s, of course, was cocktail hour culture. And part of that was that um, a lot of cocktail hour accoutrements had these little pink elephants on them. And the pink elephant represents uh, the hallucinations that you have when you're a heavy drinker and you just stop drinking cold turkey. So I always find that really fascinating that, uh, that it was so promoted as part of this drinking culture. Um, but I, I really love that motif, the pink elephant. My grandmother had a set of glasses that they would use at cocktail hour um, that had little pink elephants on them. But everybody knows how problematic the 1950s was anyway. I think alcoholism was probably one of the least of their worries. silly, primitive 1950s. Uh, we certainly don't have anything like that today, right? Certainly don't have anything much worse. But this is an ASMR reading, so, uh, you know, Everybody's entitled to their opinions, but more than anything else, people are entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Allegedly. Alright, alright, I'm getting too spicy. I'm too spicy, Aries. I'm getting too spicy. Sorry. Alright, first house. That's your house, Aries. Um, and especially if you're in Aries Rising. We've got the Nine of Pentacles here. So you're starting out in a very good position uh, as far as having plenty of money, financial freedom to do whatever it is that you feel like you want or need to do. Second, of ho second house, we have for your finances and stability, the Nine of Swords. So there could be some worry there. There could be worries. I like these too because they fit really nicely over and around the spread. We have the Jack of Hearts coming out in your third house. That's communication. And I also want to point out that the Jack of Hearts has landed right here next to the Page of Cups, which is sitting pretty firmly in the Immomacillae 
of this 12 houses spread. The Imsili is the nadir of the circle um, and represents your early life, your origins, has a lot to do with the home. Um, the third house itself can be communication, can also have to do with siblings and short distance travel. So this Jack of Hearts and this Page of Cups I can see are very closely linked here. And I think that not only is this person a water sign, but they're definitely offering you something, whether it is love or a new career. In your fourth house, we have the Three of Clubs. The Three of Clubs is about the energies that you have put out coming back to you, returning to you. And remember that we started this reading with justice and the world. So I see that you're in a very good place to do whatever it is that you want to do. And the Three of Cups uh, you've already made your decision here in the past. I can see that also with that Eight of Swords reversed. So your fifth house. The fifth house is creativity, romance, and can have to do with children. Your children or children that you are involved with in your life, caretaking, nephews, nieces, next door neighbor children. Um, we have the Eight of Swords there. Um, and again, we have this Eight of Swords coming out. So something happened in the past that there are echoes of that here in the present because that did also come out right next to that Ten of Swords. The Eight of Swords is about being stuck but we see here you've already you've already liberated yourself but it's possible that there are still loose ends that need to be tied up and because it's the fifth house, those loose ends could have to do with um, children. Or it could also have to do with you being someone's child. So there could also be um, something going on with your parents. But I haven't really seen that energy in this spread. Our cast of characters here is pretty well defined. But if this situation is with a parent, um, then that could definitely be coming up there. Otherwise, it might have to do with romance. Or if you work in a creative field, like art or graphic design, something like that. So. The sixth house, that's your daily routines, your health. And we have the Queen of Pentacles there, which is a great energy to get in your sixth house. Good health, uh, probably also health insurance. Um, although, these two things together, so the Queen of Pentacles is not entirely dissimilar from the Empress, right? And let me put these down for a minute while I talk about this. So for some of you, and this isn't going to be everyone obviously, because everyone's situation is different. Um, you could feel stuck in a relationship because uh, you are pregnant now. But again, that's a very 
selective situation. It could also be that the Queen of Pentacles is very maternal, not quite um, the same energy as the Queen of Cups, but a very fertile, because of the earth energy there, um, prosperity related as well. Um, but you could feel stuck if you want to return to work and you have children. So those are a few of the scenarios that could be going on for you. Um, let me cut the deck. We're about halfway finished with this part of the reading. Seventh house. This is your partnerships. It is also how you seek out parity with others. So your first house is about the self and your seventh house is about your relationships, your partnerships. Um, there's a lot to do with the oppositions on the wheel. So we have the Ten of Pentacles there, which is a good card to get in that position. Um, whether you are severing a relationship with an employer or with a partner. This Ten of Pentacles is going to represent the end of a financial cycle for you. Remember, we started out with the Nine of Pentacles over here in the first house. We have the Ten of Pentacles over here in the seventh house. So that's an ending to that cycle, but this cycle is still blossoming, still providing you with the resources that you need. Nine is the completion of a cycle, but not the definitive ending that ten is. Nine is more like a happily ever after. And let's look at the eighth house now. We have the Queen of Clubs there, the Queen of Wands. This could be you. Um, the eighth house, because it's in opposition to your second house, which is finance and also has to do with stability. So the eighth house is kind of like the opposite of all those things. It has to do with death, it has to do with other people's resources, and of course, one of other people's resources is their intimacy, intimate relationships. So we have the Queen of Clubs there. That could very well be you. And as a matter of fact, we have this Page of Wands over here, kind of in direct opposition to this Queen of Clubs. The Queen of Clubs also is over here next to the future, next to the future. So as the Queen of Clubs, this evolution that you're going to be going through is casting off all of these burdens, making a definitive choice, having, having plenty of choices. So the Seven of Cups in this case is going to be very similar to the world card in that you have a lot of options that are open to you at this time. And that's going to be your evolution of self. So what that is, is it's going to be a transition. So eighth house, that death energy is not just about death. Whereas in the second house we have stability, in the eighth house, we have cycles, cycles revolving, cycles ending, and new cycles beginning. And this is going to be the start of your new cycle as this Queen of Wands instead of the page.
page of wands. The ninth house now, we're looking at uh, things that you do to elevate yourself, whether that's higher education, it could be travel, long distance travel. Sometimes also has to do with spirituality. So the card that we have for your ninth house is then the king of clubs and you saw me shuffle those cards. So in the third house we have the short distance travel. In the ninth house we have long distance travel. Uh, we also have communication. We have siblinghood. We can have more like paternal, maternal situations. Uh, and the relationship between you and your higher power, which will come into play again when we get to the 12th house. This King of Wands here, we've got the King and Queen of Wands here together. And the King of Wands is also sitting here on top of this Three of Swords, which is marking your midheaven. Now remember, your Imam Selai is your origins and where you began. And the midheaven is your destiny, your fate, your goal or destiny. Could be a goal, could be a destiny. And because you are so complete here, at the beginning of this new cycle, um, this person coming into your life is going to have to navigate that with you. This is going to be a new, a new sense of self for you. Um, and there very well could be future arguments that you can't even anticipate yet. This person might be a water sign but also have a lot of fire in their chart and come across in ways that you're not anticipating at this time. And because it is the month in which we have Valentine's Day, I probably will do the obligatory um, video about astrological signs and romantic compatibilities. And you can, you can look at people's charts, but it's also important to recognize that free will exists. Um, I can make a lot of educated guesses and use my intuition to tell you about situations in your life that I probably should have no business knowing otherwise, frankly. But when it comes right down to it, at the end of the day, it's going to be each person's individual choice as to how they present themselves. And I think this is going to be a very good example to you of that. Your 10th house. The 10th house is typically about career, but it can also represent things in your environment that you're able to use to your own benefit. We have the 10 of hearts here, the 10 of cups. And opposite the 10th house, we have the 4th house, which is the house of home. And of course, uh, career will take you often away from your home and family. Um, not always, though, as we have come to discover. So, 
uh, we have this jack of hearts here in opposition to that king of clubs. And I think right now at this time, you really aren't anticipating this jack of hearts to be similar to the king of clubs. We had the three of clubs here sitting next to this page of clubs. And to me, this kind of is a part of this justice card energy where um, in your home and family life, the energy that you have put out is returning to you. So opposite from that, we have your house of career um, and we have the Ten of Hearts there. The Ten of Hearts is an emotional completion. So can actually be in certain contexts, certain contexts paired quite nicely with the Chardonnay of Ten of Swords. I mean, you really should think of the Ten of Swords as like a nice dry white wine, right? It's not as scary as people like to believe. I find the Three of Swords much more jarring in a reading than the Ten of Swords. If you have the Ten of Swords there, you know that this energy is leaving your life. If you have the Three of Swords there, it's possible that there will be many more arguments to come. And uh, I'm getting a, I'm getting a narrative so far that really this interaction with this uh, Jack of Hearts, King of Clubs, King of Cups person um, might end up mostly holding you back in a time where you have reached your own level of success and independence. And of course, it's very nice to have companionship in your life. Um, it's comforting to have someone to come home to. But there are relationships that are much worse than being single. This may end up being like that. Um, but again, this 10th house, we have a 10 there and it is the Ten of Hearts. We've got two Tens out here, the Red Tens. We've got um, Nine of Swords and the Nine of Pentacles here, kind of earlier on. So it's very easy going around to see the natural evolution of these events in your life as they're going to potentially play out. Now this Ten of Cups could be an ending. This could be saying that this is an ending to this Three of Swords disputes. The Eleventh House. So the Eleventh House, the Eleventh and Twelfth Houses have a lot to do with your metaphysical life. Um, the eleventh house can be about your occult practices, whether that is um, divination that's separate from your clairvoyance, right? Mechanical divinations like tarot, car cartomancy, um, dice, geomancy, all of these things that you can use intuition to make them better, but they also have a level of um, this is what this means and it doesn't mean this other thing. It's a lot to do with discernment. Uh, it's a lot to do with your psychological space. 
and to do with the groups that you're involved with. Let's take this top card. So indeed, I see that you're very preoccupied almost with um, with partnership, with romantic partnership. And it's bringing you closer to this King of Cups here. And finally, we'll talk about your 12th house, the ending. The ending of this situation. The beginning of the new cycle. And again, a lot to do with your intuition. And the card that we're getting here is the Joker, which I read as the Fool in the tarot deck. Now, the Fool would implore you to go off into the future without um, paying too much mind to the past. And it's possible here that the choice is yours as to whether there will be conflict and whether you'll get the King of Cups or the King of Wands. You should always be yourself in relationships because faking being somebody else so that you can be in a relationship with somebody and make it work is not beneficial to anyone. And any love reader here on youtube.com will probably tell you the same thing. However, um, there are ways of navigating these things that, and it's all about your headspace too. It's really about your headspace. So look at where this Two of Hearts in your 11th house lies. It's right there on top of this Eight of Swords. If you go into this new relationship feeling like you're trapped in your old relationship, that's no good for anybody. So make sure that if you're taking this person up on this offer, and it does look like you've worked very hard to try to be with this person. That you are not treating this relationship like a cage, like you're being trapped. Now, um, I could also argue with you at great length if you care to that um, this might also be an invitation to consider being in an open relationship. If you are a serial monogamist, there's nothing wrong with that. And as long as both partners agree that that is the best course of action, um, then that's the way you should go. However, if you're with somebody, you know, the King of Cups in the reverse has a lot of love to give. And if he's also represented by the King of Wands, he could be hot and cold with you. He's very passionate. Also has a lot of love to give. Could be that you need to consider um, not dating exclusively at this time. And that maybe if the two of you are not trying to be so conjoined in a monogamous relationship that things will work out better. Now that's just what I'm seeing here. Uh, kind of your 11th and 12th houses. 
this Eight of Swords energy from your past. Not just that this other person might want that freedom, but that you may also need some time to be your beautiful freewheeling self. All right, Aries, I think that covers a lot of these scenarios. And I don't feel like I need to get much more specific than that. I do feel like I want to pull three more cards just because, just because, just for you, Aries, just for you. cards that I have. We've got the Six of Hearts, Six of Cups, things returning from the past. Things returning from the past. Uh, we've got the Five of Pentacles. That can be about being left out in the cold. And the Two of Swords. The Two of Swords, it's your choice to make as to whether you are left out in the cold or not. A cage isn't a very good shelter, but it is a shelter. All right, Aries, I hope you have a great month of March. For those of you who have March birthdays, I really do wish you a happy solar return. And I look forward to seeing you again very, 